Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have covered air pollution and we saw that how exactly different components, uh, I mean the different causes contribute to air pollution and how we can control it. So some of the advantages of CNG over petrol or diesel are as follows. So one good uh, advantage is that CNG is quite cheaper when compared to petrol or diesel. The second thing is it burns quite efficiently. That means it doesn't leave a lot of residue behind so that that residue again cause some uh, air pollution or soil pollution or anything of that sort. So that means unburnt residue is quite small we can say that. So this unburnt, so that means a very small part of it is left behind to cause any sort of problem to the environment. So that in that case also we can say that it is quite an efficient fuel. So because of these advantages, CNG is always preferred over petrol and diesel. As I said just now that in Delhi around 2002, all the public transport including buses and autos were all converted to run on CNGs and it actually helped a lot because when you <laughs> convert all the uh, means of public transport, you are actually converting a lot of vehicles altogether. So it, it brings about a lot of change in the level of air pollution. So now let us see what is water pollution. Now that we have discussed in detail about air pollution, I'm sure you would have got an idea about what water pollution could be. So it is contamination of water bodies with undesirable substances. Now what could be these undesirable substances in water? Now these undesirable substances could be detergents because these detergents are nothing but chemicals. They contain a lot of harmful chemicals which could make the water contaminated enough that it becomes harmful for drinking purposes. So detergents could be one thing, insecticides and pesticides or radicides which are used in agriculture, industrial solvents, so various solvents or chemicals which are used in, in the industries, fertilizers, so fertilizers are again used in agriculture, excreta, excreta of human beings or other animals, so excreta also is a major source of uh, water pollution, chemical wastes from several chemical factories, ammonia, so these are some of the undesirable substances which are capable of contaminating water bodies. And they are, and these undesirable substances, what are they known as? They are known as water pollutants. Like those substances which cause air pollution are air pollutants. Similarly, these substances which cause water pollution are water pollutants. And what are the water bodies which we are talking about? What do we mean by contamination of water bodies? Water bodies can refer to anything like lakes or river or oceans or ponds. So any of these can be a water body. So any of these can get contaminated by any of these undesirable substances and that's how the water becomes polluted and it becomes extremely harmful for drinking purposes. Not only drinking, drinking, cooking, bathing, so for all of them it becomes unsuitable. So let us quickly look at the harmful effects of water pollution. What happens if the water gets polluted with harmful substances? It becomes dangerous to aquatic life forms. Now when we think about ourselves, we feel that water is so important to us. We drink water, we cannot survive without water. But before that, just think of the entire aquatic life which lives completely depending on water. For example, the fishes which live in water or the aquatic plants or various other organisms, the, the marine organisms like whales or sharks, they all live inside water. So if the water itself is poisonous, what will happen to them? So that it, it, will, it can become an end to the entire aquatic life. All aquatic life forms can be killed due to polluted water. Diseases and even death of humans. Now human beings also depend on water. Do you think that we can survive without water? We use water for several purposes. For example, we use water for drinking, we use for cleaning ourselves, we use water for uh, cooking. So basically whatever we eat, that also contains water. 
whatever we drink that also contains water so everything has water so if the water itself contains poisonous substances and it is polluted so it can cause diseases in human beings there are several diseases which are waterborne for example cholera typhoid they are examples of waterborne diseases so these kind of diseases can happen in human beings and it can even lead to death in extreme conditions Skin problems. Now, since water is also used for bathing and for cleaning ourselves, if it is not clean, it can cause several skin problems like pimples or rashes or any other skin infections. Disturb the food chain. Now, what happens is, as I said, if water is polluted, so it might happen that the entire aquatic life form ends. For example, if you are talking about, uh, say, a pond or a river so let us say that the water of that river is all polluted so what happens is the aquatic life in that river for example the fishes and uh, the, the small fishes the big fishes all of them use the same water so they also have that poison inside them and now let us suppose that fish is being eaten by some other organism for example let us say human beings eat that fish which is uh, which contains some poisonous substance. So what will happen? So human beings body will also get that poisonous substance and this is how uh, it will enter into inside the food chain. So a lot of animals will feed upon each other. So in that way this poison which was present in the water gets transmitted to a variety of different organisms and all of them get adversely affected. So that's how it can disturb the food chain. Ecosystem is affected. So when I say ecosystem, what is ecosystem? It is nothing but the living and the non-living components together are called ecosystem, right? So if you talk about any aquatic ecosystem, say pond is an aquatic ecosystem. So if the water in the pond is polluted, what happens to that ecosystem? That entire ecosystem gets spoiled. Maybe all the fishes will die because the water is polluted. It might also happen that other aquatic plants might also die. So gradually the ecosystem will become unbalanced in the sense that maybe the living components will not be there at all. So only the non-living components will remain. So that will not make a proper ecosystem. So that's how the aquatic ecosystem can get spoiled and again different ecosystems are also linked to each other so that means it can uh, affect an entire ecosystem thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again